special episode of What Women Binge today. We have our friends in the studio. Woo-hoo. This is Brooke. This is Hillary. You might remember Brooke from the um, Tiny, book did, Club. Tiny, book Tiny Club. Book Club. And Hillary is here for the first time. She's one of our dearest friends. And we are here for a very special reason. We are going to talk about Daisy Jones and the Six. So if you haven't, pause. Go read the book. Go watch the show, and then come, come, back. And then come back. Just real quick. <laughs> Just real I have quick. a lot to say about this. Mm. <laughs> I know you do. Many things. Well, first we're all dressed. Well, not maybe not all dressed, but we're we're seventies themey, right? This you were is like, blousey. I like it. This is like a, I, I went seventies vibes here. Seventies vibes. Maybe yeah, not as color. literal as y'all for sure. Brooke's got the hair going on. Yeah, and yeah. you probably look the most like Daisy. Oh, Riley, I would say. Yeah, yeah. She's you gorgeous. have the look going on. I love the earrings, the tassel earrings. And you're holding the lips. Oh, did y'all notice that if you if you're watching the show, speaking of Daisy Jones, that you can buy the clothes right there off your <gasps> what? TV? What? Yeah, Problem. at the bottom. And one of course the she scenes, found a way to shop. It was oh, like, yeah. well, Levi's launched like a Daisy jean. Were you watching it online or something? No, I was watching it on my TV. TV. Interesting. I didn't I did see, that. see that. I didn't see, okay, so wait, it's all well, through Amazon. Yeah. Oh, well, at the bottom you know, there was like a little pop up, and it was all. like. I didn't see that. I just click it. So they actually, Amazing. another little funny thing, they have a full out. Like, I had to look it up about the music because I was very mm-hmm. interested about the music. So for those of you that don't know, if you are listening and haven't read the book or watched the show, the sh- the, the book is about uh, a group of, that comes together, like a hot 70s group. Like, like Hillary, said, tell it. Yeah, very Fleetwood Mac-ish. Yes, yes. Um, storyline. Yes, yeah. yeah. storyline and, and almost even structure is what I was mm-hmm. reading. I don't know. I don't know like enough about Fleetwood Mac to know if that's like their they origination. But and, yeah, yeah, there was a lot of tormented yeah. love issues yeah, yeah, yeah. in there. Yeah. But <laughs> it's it's um you know supposed to be I, I believe you know something that is uh, just what you would expect to find, but didn't actually happen. Right. Mm-hmm. That's so the craziest thing is this is probably the first audiobook I ever listened to. My friend suggested it. I was on a long car ride, and she was like, "You got to listen to it." I called her about halfway through. I was like, how did I not know? I mean, they were on Letterman and they were on the cover of Rolling Stone. Like, <laughs> how did I not know about this? I've never heard of this band. And she goes, Melissa, it's fictional. It's not, I know, like when they're on SNL. Uh-huh. And I was like, and I had to remember that it it didn't not actually it's happen. It's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. that's how we felt with her book, Evelyn Hugo, too. Like when the oh, book ended, it was like, we got to go back to watch the all the movies. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we're like, oh, oh they're, they're not real. real. But so anyway, the music does exist now. So mm-hmm. this band, this actor band that they put together for the show actually put out an album. There is a soundtrack and it's like the number one soundtrack on Spotify or something. Oh, I haven't had it so far. It's not my favorite. The theme song though. I love And I love her voice. I love her I voice I love the voices too. and I like the music. I expected to love the music. And I, mm. I actually really do. I'm shocked at their voices. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked at the some of the, some of the songwriting. They've I haven't put, listened to all of it. They've but. put in a lot of work to for the, the music and mm-hmm. it I mean, it's good. You can't imagine actors just always singing and the, it works right. in this one. Yeah. yeah. Well, and let's just the elephant in the room. Not really. But <laughs> I mean, she's Riley Keo, yeah. mm-hmm. the star Daisy Jones is Elvis's granddaughter. Like yeah. mm-hmm. that. First of all, she's I don't think amazing. I realized that the she was the casting for her is perfect. I think, I, yeah. I think I so too. I love her. I'm a little bothered by we've watched. We've all watched the first three episodes, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bothered by the fact that we don't see the Daisy side of her, mm-hmm. like the book portrays her. I feel like we see all of that in Billy. We yeah. see his partying. We see his addiction happening. You don't see Daisy doing any of that. Wait, remind me. I think they're I building it, to it. Yeah. yeah I feel I'm like it's been so long since I read it. Remind me, though. What is she? What is she? was just a party girl. And she yeah. had kind of already made a following for herself at this point when she joined the band. Mm-hmm. She'd had, I think, like a single or something by this point in the book. Like she was a somewhat known person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the time she joined the band. They were both artists before they were brought together. It, yeah. Uh, it, when, not just the band. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, when they had her come into the studio on the most recent episode and they said, has she ever recorded before? Right. You know, mm-hmm. and she was a little bit unfamiliar, uncomfortable. I agree. I think they made her seem like she kind of got her break when she was with them instead of being as established on her own as the book had her right. by well, that point. I, I found that too. I thought it was interesting because you don't see her being like, you know, a kind of a wilting flower except for that scene where she walks in the studio. And I guess I can I can attest to like when I walk on a set, even though I know my part or I won the audition or I've acted before, I walk into a new scenario and I get kind of terrified. So I was looking at it like that. But then when they claimed that she was nervous because I, I don't think it, 
that scene didn't seem to feed into that like that narrative to say well, that she was new to it. No. And they, you know, she was kind of this party girl. She was on the strip. She was a part of the scene there. She, yeah. There was a vibe about her. She was coked you didn't out. Get they, that? They, no. hit that they hit that. They hit that. For like the troubadour scene. Five or... minutes in the first episode and they just brushed past it, which you were hoping with but that's this not a, being a I movie. Think part I think they're going to use that to create drama. Okay. And maybe so. But then like I think about how, you know, all of her stories and her her songs led back to some of those moments in the book where, mm-hmm. I, like, her marching out of the recording, which we might see soon, or, you know, being really flaky and not showing up to things or mm-hmm. leaving early. We haven't seen any of that of her personality. They just painted her as this, like, bohemian, mm-hmm. like, all about the art, all about the writing kind of person. And I never got that from her personality. I love the, the scene though, where she was with Teddy at the bar, where he approaches her. Yeah. And oh, I did she too. says, and he yes. says to her, he gives her the card, and he says, like, you know, I'll help you with your. Why would I need your help? Like, I was mm-hmm. like, why have I never said that to anyone? Like, I want to <laughs> use that. I well, loved that scene, and I, I think the casting for him was great too. Yes, they did a fabulous. great job. That was so yeah. good. The only yeah. actor that I don't really like love, mm-hmm. especially is um, what's his name? Not Teddy. The oh. Eddie. Yeah. The Eddie, concert the bass promoter. Player. Oh, no, the bass no. player. Okay. The one who's always just kind of angry. Yes. Yeah. I just... Uh, yeah, I can see that. Is he the one with the weird hair in the, but you in do, the, in the current day? You kind of yeah. just... I think you're not supposed to love him. No, right. And but, so that kind of... They kind of nail that. he's one of the... I hate to say this because I, I... But like... I think he's one of the weaker actors. He's, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I don't believe him. Yeah. Ca- the yeah. girl who plays Camilla, I so love her. Good. Yes, she she's is, one of my favorites. All of them. Wow. my favorite. Yes. Yeah, is she's so perfect. Her presence is just her presence. I feel like is so strong. They nailed it. And mm-hmm. you know, I feel like it takes a really strong person to say, you know, when when Billy at different times makes these declarations, like, no, I'm going to be all about my family, and she said. No, I married a musician. Mm-hmm. You know, shut she up. She knew what Go she back was getting it. into. And, and she is for you. Yeah, and you're with, with you. you. Yeah. And she's, yeah. she is such a strong character that you, to have an actress um, play that role, she needed to have a really strong presence. And I think she does. Oh, I think yeah. you're right. I think I she did has to walk a line it. of mm-hmm. being vulnerable enough to go, you're not going to do drugs. You're not going to leave me. Yeah. Pre- or you can do what you want. But when this baby comes, you're, you're stepping showing in. up. Like, oh, yeah. You're going to show up. Can you imagine? Wow. Um, yeah. And then when she does, you know, accept him back and it's still a little shaky and they have that moment where. Oh, I like that he like he's comes like, up to her and he's you're gonna... just going to make you're just OK with it. And she's like, have you ever loved anybody? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like she's making it's not because she's weak. She's making the decision to stay with the man she loves. That's like she she's knows tough, what it means. But she's not like it's not like abrasive talk. It's yeah. A she's just yeah. she it's just, just knows who she is. She yeah. knows what she wants. And like and that actress plays it so perfectly where it's vulnerable. But it's also like just being able to play that kind of sensitive, like being a pregnant woman and all those mm-hmm. emotions that would come up. And but being able to walk that line of also being tough without being a bitch, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. the other elephant in the room. The guy who plays Billy, though, I love him. Looks to be about forty five years old. Yeah, definitely. And he looks like he's weathered <laughs> and he's supposed many. Supposed to be playing like a twenty five year old. Yeah, but he's like also he's weathered to be many con- many uh, I, tour seasons. He looks before younger he started. in his Sam yes. Claflin. Yes, and he's also from what is he? Uh, oh, he's the Hunger Games guy. He's yeah, Finnick. That and he's in something something else. Where but he's she like looks British. 20 to yeah. 20 something Snow years White old. And Huntsman. Is that what you're thinking of? He's from Snow White. No, he, I, he, the only way it works though is when he's really strung out and on drugs. That kind of I giggled so hard when he approached Teddy in the market and was like, oh, "I know yeah. if some kid came up to you're me, like, nope, you're I'm not a like, kid. Uh, you mean some middle aged man, someone's father? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peaky Blinders. Oh, he's in Peaky three Blinders. years of I don't Peaky remember Blinders. That. Uh, Book of Love. I'm looking Book at of Love. That's AMG what I remember right him from. Last Night in Soho. That's a great know. movie. So, yeah, he's got quite a body of work, actually. He's and fantastic. I love him. But he looks a lot like Nicholas Holt. There is just no... Has, con- yeah. Yes. He has been very me. strong facial he's, features well, and, and lines. Got, he's 36. That, so many, like, facial In real wrinkles. life. In real yeah. life. He's 36. And he looks it. Mm-hmm. 
I don't yeah. know. There was in the beginning. I feel like they made them all look really young. I feel like they did a little thing on their skin. Maybe the first episode, they did and maybe some the really great not. filters. Yeah, they well, did a little, he was supposed like, to be like after, just out of high, high school. school. Yeah. yeah, he was the big yeah. brother. When yeah. they're playing in the garage and stuff, they definitely all are very young looking. Um, they change look so Billy. much that I actually get a little confused with who's who. I'm like, mm-hmm. which one's the other brother? Mm-hmm. But um, there's a lot. I it's love a lot of characters. the other brother. He's good. I think that's a great who that casting is. too. I'll pull. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Pull them all. I want to talk about. Riley for a second too because I wait the other brother is um oh wait brother is yeah, Will Harrison playing Graham yes Graham and yeah. then there's Josh Whitehouse plays Eddie Sebastian Chacon is that how you say it? or Chacon uh, is Warren uh and then Suki Warren's Waterhouse the one on the Aaron. boat right I love him he's hilarious <laughs> I love boats he's I love I mean because I love <laughs> working at the marina yeah. Yeah. And, he, and then he looks around on like, a boat uh, like I want yeah. a boat which I love <laughs> yeah <laughs> who's Wait, what the we one gonna... that plays and then Simone is uh Nabia B I've That's never heard of her before but she That's is see what she's done so, so she, beautiful she was oh Black Panther unbelievable voice White Wedding do yeah. they they all voice their character right yeah mm-hmm that's all she's done, by the way. She's done three or four things. She's good for pretty her. Strong, yeah. Interesting. yeah, she's younger. Beautiful, she's she was born in ninety two. Great, great oh, job. she's a baby. Riley, oh. I find Riley to be 90s. very interesting, though. I like sometimes she's she's either on or off for me. Like either I adore her, or I'm or I'm like turned and I'm like Ugh. like there's sometimes when she's so natural, and there's other times when it feels a little forced. And mm-hmm. I I just think maybe it's because it's, it's I think it's her first time out. Um, acting. I don't know. I think it's her if first. She's that around. one sex scene that is in <laughs> episode two. Apparently, that's her husband in oh, real God. life. What? Okay. Yes. And she there's like an article Logan pulled up and she talks about how awkward it was, even though it was him. Oh wow! I feel like that would be almost more awkward. <laughs> I feel like that would have like made Unless, me at least feel more comfortable too. I don't know what. Don't oh no, know. she was in Mad Max. You guys, she was in Mad Max. She was in American Honey. I think this is just her first leading role. She right? was in a movie called Logan Lucky. That's funny. <laughs> is Logan getting lucky tonight? Oh, she's also in the Terminal List, which is like Mark's favorite show right now. But she's so she's got quite a little bit of work here. Like she's she's it looks like she's guest starred on a lot of stuff. Yeah, she had a big movie last year. She's really yeah, good. But there's other times that I feel like it's, I think I didn't hear I didn't know who she was until last Zola. year. Zola. Okay, I think that's what it was. Called. And she looks so much like her grandmother. She looks so much like Priscilla. I, yes, it has to be for her. Absolutely. She, yeah, playing that character that kind of reflects a lot of what I assume her grandparents granddad's life was like and a Mm -hmm. lot like what her mom's life may have been like Mm -hmm. yeah and obviously she filmed this before her mom passed away but I know can you imagine like going through all the success right now and just knowing your mom just missed Mm -hmm. it like well and just like how much of that she might have lived yeah Mm -hmm. so that's yeah and well luckily while she was (laughs) making the show you know, hopefully she had her mom there to sort of bounce things off of, too, and sort of help her, so. guide her through it. Mm-hmm. Um, not just perform it, not just like, you know, from a realistic standpoint, but also just to like lean on for support during a big role like this that so yeah. many people are waiting to watch that Reese Witherspoon is producing that, you yeah. know, is this huge Amazon series. A lot of coverage. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't even imagine. And it dives into some really big issues, too, like substance abuse and things like that, mm-hmm. that, you know, if you think about like, you know. Elvis and what happened in his life, he made it really big, but then he kind of died at his peak and had all those issues too. And how, you know, kind of conflicting that some of the feelings might be about yeah. that mm-hmm. and what that might have brought up too in their family. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking, watching her, I think that all the time I'm just like, oh gosh. Like, but I mean, she's living her own life, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She, this is, who knows what she's like in real life. I'm sure she has her own struggles, but like, I, when I'm watching it the whole time, I'm just like, <gasps> yeah, definitely yeah. a little it's close to home. Home. <laughs> But I think Riley, it's so funny because sometimes I'll be like, oh my gosh, there's Priscilla. No, there's Lisa Marie. Oh, there's Priscilla. You can definitely oh. see the yeah. family resemblance. Yes, there. it's crazy. Not like Elvis, though. Like, I feel like Lisa Marie always did have a like the eyebrows of Elvis or something. I always, She always looked like Elvis to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Riley, Riley looks just look. like her yeah. grandmother. And yes, more. Priscilla. Now, yeah. next comparison to the book question. Did Aurora not come before Honeycomb? Oh. In the book? Um, no. It didn't? Mm-mm. Honeycomb was like the... I don't think so. I, I thought, thought Honeycomb was a hit for them even before Daisy I thought came Aurora, along. Or Aurora was a big hit and then they didn't have another until Honeycomb. I don't... I, I genuinely can't remember. Yeah. I need to go back and look. I yeah. can't remember. This is what I kind of liked about watching this was like 
I kind of know the story, but I can't remember, so I can't wait to be reminded of it. Agreed. That's kind of the thing when you fall in love with a movie, I mean, a book, and then they turn it into a movie. You're, you're watching it, and you're like, I don't remember. Oh, I remember this, mm-hmm. or I don't remember but this. But there's other things and you're, like, waiting for to happen. But I have to say, this is also the first time I've ever watched or listened to an audio book and then watched a movie. Mm-hmm. Anytime I've ever watched a movie that came from a book, I read the book. Yeah. So this is the first time it was an audio book. So I think it just, my brain remembered it differently. Yeah. For or sure. barely remembered it. I just remember there's Daisy and there's the six and they get together and they fight a lot. Yeah. And maybe they switch husbands. I don't remember. It's very. No. I can't remember. It's <laughs> very. No husbands. So no, that's no. just no Fleetwood inner Mac. cheating. That was just Fleetwood oh, Mac. Damn. No, no, no. Because, no. well, I don't want to spoil it I know. for people who haven't read the book. But And we don't know exactly where it's going to go. There are some shenanigans, but not anything. Yes. You have. Well, they hinted at it. Well, the, <laughs> <laughs> is Siri talking to you? <laughs> but Graham and Karen eventually mm-hmm. will have their little moment. Okay. And then... Which was starting Daisy's in the third episode. relationship mm-hmm. will happen. Well, I do have to say that was one thing that was interesting, kind of going back to what we were talking about before, about things sort of taking a little bit of time. Like maybe Riley's character, or uh, maybe Daisy will, you know, some things will come out about her later that were supposed to be shown in the beginning, but I felt like it took a really long time to get Daisy and the six together. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like what was it, the end of the second episode or something? Where third. I was, third. Like, third. third. They was it third? Yeah. Was it third? I was like, when are they going to get the, like, so yeah, that's the issue is it's slow. It How is many more excited. Do have? I don't know. I believe there's 10 I mean, initially, so like but I don't know if they're getting through the whole, I believe it's for the whole book. Yeah. yeah. 10 for the whole book. Okay. So, and they're what, 45 minutes each? Yeah. So oh, I was excited. We still got it a lot wasn't of story to tell in a, a little movie. amount of time. Ten episodes. Yeah, there's ten. ten. Okay. Yep. I was excited. Here, it was a show can, and not oh, a movie. I can't. So here's the here's the 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 line for each up each. So track one. I like that they call it by the tracks. I but I wish they were also the names of the songs because I looked at the like honeycomb playlist. I thought, and I thought not the it was going to match too. I it actually did. The, it doesn't. That makes me mad. Apparently, they're names of hit songs actually from the era. Yes. So. Okay. So the first one says. Uh, Daisy Jones is a disaffected teenager on amid the Sunset Strip rock scene. Billy Dunn and his brother form a band with friends desperate to escape the suburbs. When Billy meets Daisy, her talent and his ambition will change their lives. Okay. But that's not what it's happens in the, the first, first. Yeah, they don't even meet in the no. first episode. Also, did anybody else get weirded out by the relationship with her parents being like way more like ick yeah. in the show than it was oh, in the book? first it, scene with the mom. She's so awful. Yeah. She is. But in the book, oh, yeah. I felt like there were... Several times where they said, like, you know, mom did not care about Daisy it at all. It was more all. of a like, disconnect. N- disconnect. Yeah. Not, not really disconnect. like an abusive. Yeah. Well, that dad would let all of his artist friends use Daisy as um, a model for their for their art and things like that because of her beauty. Yes. Yeah. But that he never did because he was more interested in his male models. I mean, they alluded to a lot. Yeah. In the book. But they in were the never book. just like verbally abusive to no, her. No, like, they, they were. The and I guess they had to do that in such a short amount of time. Yeah. But well, if we're talking about the Not to give away too, too much in the book, but you know, her parents end up when uh, she tries to go home yeah. in the middle of the night and... Do we give no, away no, spoilers? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I mean, they didn't Spoiler know that alert. she had. <laughs> they didn't know that she was the one that had broken in. She was so excited. Oh, yeah. She had reached all the success. She thought her parents would have reached out to her. They didn't even know she was in town. They didn't even know, you know, she was on the cover of Rolling Stone. So she, of course, was you know high and and had her own issues, but walked to their house and saw her old childhood bedroom and just wanted to go. You know, she said it looked lonely. And um, so she broke in and they called the police on her. Of course, they didn't realize they didn't even recognize her, didn't know it was her. And then she had drugs on her. So they ended up, you know, but her parents weren't even the ones that bailed her out. It was Simone. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously they had the means to and they probably had the means to, you know, hire a good attorney or, you know, make it so that she didn't go in in the first place, to be honest, if, if they wanted to push the issue. But they didn't. They, you know. Kind yeah. of left her to her own devices. Yeah. So maybe I'm, you know, no. taking too, reading too much between the lines. But no, you're I, right. There I, wasn't a it lot just of. felt like it was a very direct abuse, but yes. it was very well, neglectful. Connected. But because very the whole, because of the what we're talking about and like it taking so long for them to get to, you know, even Daisy being a part of the six. I think that they had to cut some things and be like, all right, quick, mom walks in the room, they're having a party, and she tells her she sucks. You know, like, yeah, yeah. done. Mm-hmm. So it's just like quick getting to the point of like, Daisy was an abusive, abused mm-hmm. child, or verbally abused at least. Well, and the, are they good mom when she's reading her her diary? Yes. And the yes. mom's just like, oh, oh you're, you're so, so pretty. pretty. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah, right? they have to like quick do, it's like, like sign me little, up for yeah. your therapy there. Yeah. 
Ah, well, you're right. And it is hard to show those between the line nuances in a 45 minute exactly. show that, you know, you have. I think they just needed to get the point across. Her parents were trash moving on. Yeah. Well, it's always hard to take a book and turn it yeah. to and, and, and relay all the same things into right onto the screen. So, yeah, you have to kind of you have to cut you have to figure out which characters to cut, which things. I mean, and they it, they made Simone a bigger part of it. They made the parents less of a part of it. Probably, yeah. you know, they had to like pick and choose where they went with it. But uh, but we all agree we like Camilla. We like yes, her. yes, I think she was great. great what do you guys character. think? So there was this there was this article in Indie Wire, right? About and it was titled "Amazon's Daisy Jones and the Six Series is a Cacophony of Bad Choices," <laughs> a documentary that doesn't make sense, a star-crossed romance with anemic chemistry, and a rock and roll story built on cliches. But hey, the music is okay. So that's, I think they didn't read the book. That's rough. Yeah, that's, that's a what rough that says headline. to me. It did. It didn't. They didn't read the book. And honestly, which I, is okay. I think it's a cliche. It's a lot of cliches because it's it supposed happened. to be. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's a cliche because that's what. Yeah, what, what it's more like a stereotype happened. because yeah, yeah. yeah things sort of. Um, that's but, the point. But it, it is reminiscent of some other stories and other bands. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, also it's only three episodes so far. Yeah, I think we have a lot more to go and I'm hoping like the next one they'll show them having some success and then we'll start getting into like the trouble of, mm-hmm. of that they get into but um, so they, there's a lot of talk in this article about the documentary film style of it all like mm-hmm. whether or not the documentary like they think that the documentary it sounds like they, they think that the documentary style is overdone and now there's like these doc these fake doc stories and then this is like so they said that they use this improperly that if they were going to do it documentary style what you would have is you would have the current day interviews and then flashbacks of b-roll footage of the band while they talk about it but mm. in this case they're cutting it's to the actual like memories or what mm-hmm. happened yeah this is i like, love it i think it's i great. think it's perfect i think I, they're doing it exactly how you would read the book mm-hmm. yeah because in the book you're not sitting there watching footage of it yeah it's it, they're they they're telling the story tell the story and, and I wouldn't want to see it that way because I don't want to watch this as a documentary. I want to see this as a movie. Right. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that wasn't that's not a fair thing for them to say because it's a fake. It's a mockumentary or if, yeah. if anything. So I don't think it's meant to be a documentary. It's meant to be it's documentary just a style. part of the story. Right. It's a storytelling. Mm-hmm. And I, you know what? I wouldn't want to see it any other way because when I read it, that's how that's I imagined how you, it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how it's written. And honestly, I think if they had tried to do it another way, it would have been just like any other kind of soapy mm-hmm. drama. You know, there's so many of those right yeah. now. And I feel like it kind of would have been uh, a little boring. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe not boring, but a lot like everything You would have seen it. Yeah. You would have seen it. it. You know, yeah. Yeah. I like this style. I like the first person of that of that element, like that the, they're telling the story. Yeah. That it's coming from the people themselves. And it, 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 it sucks me right in the way the book did, which makes me think that it's it's real in a way, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, when the... When the last third episode was over, I was like, "Man, I can't wait for Friday." I know. Yeah. I yeah. I want to watch the next. It's one, giving me, even a though lot I know what's going to happen for the future projects that are coming, especially Seven Husbands. Oh. Yes, because that means well, Taylor Reed Jenkins, Jenkins is a the writer of the book is a um, producer on this, so she is great. She oh, J- Taylor Jenkins Reed. <laughs> I <always do> that. <laughs> she is a producer on the show. She's like big time involved in the show. That so is how Margaret Atwood is so uh, Handmaid's Tale. So I think okay. that means that it'll and you know that I think that also means they can go another season and get another book. Maybe yeah. <gasps> I I mean that's having yeah. her attached can help with that. You know, at least you get the same vibe. You get the same. You know, I think that that's what people have realized with remaking stories that are books like having this IP is that a lot of time if you leave the writer out of it you lose what you, the core the of it was. Yeah, the, yeah. like well, and I think about that, what happened with the last season of Game of Thrones. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although he Just was kidding. I think that's he another was day. Involved, that's another he, episode. Yeah, but Margaret Atwood One is I a perfect example of handmaid. Handmaid's She's too. having to reincarnate, you know, the first season mm-hmm. was the first book was the book. Yeah. And then where do you go from there? But if mm-hmm. Margaret Atwood's involved then she's got those ca- she's been thinking about that for decades. So. She she created them. Yeah. You know, she, I yeah. mean, she she knows at the root yeah. of them where they're from, what they do, where they're going. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the the costuming. Mm. I love it. I love except it, except yeah. for that one guy's awful wigs. Er, okay, who is that? Which one? one? The, what one guy? He's the the tour manager. That That's the one I was find thinking. In LA. Yes, oh, it's so bad. Timothy Oliphant in, plays in, yes. the, in oh. the short little bathrobe yes. situation. Yes. Oh, and oh, he's it's just so such a gross. Also, Can what's I her name? He's the girl who plays Karen. I mean, he's just such a. What'd you say? 
Oh, Sookie I Waterhouses. He, I was with calling him mean names. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, when she's in the, in the looks current very day. Fake. Current, her current day, day or documentary the 70s style. You mean. One. The current day. The one. bleach yeah. blonde. Yeah. It's bad. I think yeah. it's meant to represent a certain time period, maybe. Yeah. More I think so. so. Than, I agree. Oh, yeah. But, Timothy Alphon. It's so funny. I didn't think that was him. like, I was like, why do I know that guy? I thought he was uh, Fergie's husband. What's his I name? I did too. <laughs> Josh Dumel. <laughs> that's who I was thinking. Well, yes. I, when I first saw him, I thought that's who it was too. And Logan's like, no. He told me who it was. I know I had to look it up. I can't. I, I can't claim that I just knew that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, his his wig oh, in the seventies wig is real, real bad. And the glasses yeah. and the bad mustache are just like yeah, real, real bad. None of this is working. It but he gives me, you that ick that yeah. you would think a tour manager would have. But if we were going to go out one night and we were like, all right, everyone dress seventies theme, and we had ordered a costume online. Someone would have. He's that. like yes. a caricature of with the wig. A seventies. But that's unfortunate when there's bad wigs. Like, what did I watch? I we watched a big movie. There were really bad wigs. Oh, it was um, Death in the Nile, <laughs> and I I was like, these are these are terrible. I was with some hair and makeup people watching it. And we we're like, these are this is terrible hair and makeup and and wigs. Like, <laughs> it was weird. I but think then, it was on purpose because everyone else's are so good. But the I wardrobe really is so it, subtle though too. For the seventies, I feel like it's not like a costumey type show. The wardrobe doesn't distract from the actors or the scenery or like, you know, you're in the 70s, but it's not like hitting you over the head with it Mm -hmm. in a way. But the only other bad wig that I noticed, and honestly, it's not bad all the time, just in some of the shots is um, what's his name? The drummer. The boat guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, is it Warren? Warren. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when he when Billy comes home from yeah, rehab, and he and he, and he's like, "What do you think?" And I'm like, <laughs> "But I okay. almost I almost feel like it's so appropriate yeah, for his character I for agree. sure." Yeah. Same with same with the tour guide. I feel like it's almost like he's supposed to be like a caricature yes. of a sleazy '70s Icky, yeah, yeah, yes. okay. tour manager. Um, but the way they describe him in the book, where he's like, "You know, I needed them. I'm a drummer. I can't, and I just wanted yeah. to be a part of things." And he was kind of goofy, and then it totally makes it sense. like fit. But it, it's but I so funny. Saying, yeah. I, in some scenes, I'm just like, he just plopped that on, didn't he? Plus, and <laughs> they were like, like hot go. and started itching. And got a little bit. <laughs> well, a I feel like, I mean, I, I think there's so many characters. It's really hard to service all of them. I, I really hope that you get to see all the different um, characters kind of develop, and you get to see some more of these guys kind of become a bigger part of the story. But I don't know. If, I don't know if there's time. Mm-hmm. I think there's too many people in it. To tell the story that they have to tell because they have to get through a lot of life in mm-hmm. seven more episodes. I mean, I felt like they did a good job. I mean, they were, I think, part of the reason of not bringing them together as quickly was so that they can do individual character development. Mm-hmm. Like Billy going through all of his, you know, having already Camilla, gone through, the through love- rehab and, you mm-hmm. know, yes. for the first time and things like that. Um, and then Daisy trying to show her journey, which, you know, doesn't exactly align with the book and yes you know there are some differences but I feel like they worked really hard to build those two individual characters especially but now I'm like how are they gonna get through all of this <laughs> life all of these things that happen in, in just seven a, episodes yeah I have no idea also this is nitpicky but didn't they live in Topanga Canyon in the book oh I don't remember I don't either I'm almost positive yeah um, you'll probably only remember that because of well, Boy Meets yeah. World. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love the Panga Canyon in general, in the actual location. But in my head, because it's so far separated from L.A., because it's out yeah. near Malibu. Yeah. Like, you don't, or out past Malibu, really. Like, I, yeah, doesn't feel like oh, in the you heart of it. Oh, you mean But they're in Laurel they Canyon. In, yeah, so they, they, it's but a, maybe they I'm say we finally got a house and we got it in Laurel. Like, we're li- I don't care if it's small or whatever. We live in Laurel Canyon. Yeah. yeah. But and I was thinking about that. I was like, is Laurel Canyon somewhere where people want to live? <laughs> Maybe in the seventies. But yeah. um, it's, well, right it's right above right Hollywood. There. It's right above Hollywood. Yeah. So you're right above well, all the record labels. Well, they did say someone had just died in the house. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole thing they they get it room. haunting yeah. the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they got it cheap. Um, and I love that they yeah Karen's room. What they left uh that they left it all like pink florally walls, <laughs> and they were like, you can have that room. Old pictures and yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Warren's Sober. like, why don't I have a bed? And they were like, well, you could have had Karen. And he's like, no, I couldn't. It was haunted. Is that why he's living on a boat? No, he's living on a boat as a, a, at the current end. Day. Yeah. Current yes. day, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Amanda, do you like what's on my face right now? I love them. These are my pear glasses. I'm obsessed. They're so cool. 
You know why they're so cool? Because you can literally change them anytime you want. Also, because I can see. Well, that's when true I too. read, I need to see, and it really helps. So why stick with the same old pair of glasses when you can have these wonderful glasses? I love that they're lightweight too, so they sit nicely on my face. And then you snap on the frames that you want on top. You can have sunglasses. I've got plaid on right now, but when I take the plaid off, if I just unsnap these, I got a nice light pink color going on. They're so cute. They're so affordable. They're so easy to wear. Um, I mean, this is just a very exciting partnership for me. Yeah, you can change your glasses quicker than you change your hair or quicker than you can change your shirt. Like, you just literally take the magnetic frame off the front and you've got a different pair of glasses on. It's awesome. It basically makes it to where it's the only eyewear you will ever need. Top frames start at $25, so you can build a collection that's unique to you. You can match your outfit, support your home team, or rep your favorite superhero in a snap. And today, over 200 million children worldwide who need glasses can't get them. So every time you buy a pair, Pear provides glasses to a child in need. So to get these glasses and stay as fresh as your unique style, go to PearEyewear.com slash WWB for 15% off your first purchase. That's Pear, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com slash WWB. Thank you, Pear, for being a sponsor of What Women Binge. So, guys, are we... Are, Anything else we want to say about Daisy Jones? No, I'm just excited those to our questions. I think it. it's, yeah, I, yeah, I right. like it. You guys we'll have to, to come back for the last, for the, okay. Finale. Yeah, Gladly. when we're on Deal. the 10th. I'm yeah. sure we'll have lots of opinions. Yeah. <laughs> right so far down, though, I, 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 okay. I have to disagree with the, with the reviews. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm yeah, really I, I, it. Too, I think they put it together nicely. I, I think it's interesting. I read one headline that said, um, even Elvis's granddaughter couldn't save this. And I was like, I uh, really? Yeah. That's not fair. I feel like they're almost being harder a little. Well, they're critics, a little, I guess. Yeah, but I. Yeah, the Guardians. Like, not even Elvis's grandkid can save this. Yeah. What else? Oh, Let me see if there's a few but others. I'm, I'm going to. So have they seen that. the whole series when no. they write this? Or I think they only, they've seen only seen a few seen episodes. First, no, some of them have seen it. It's a, I mean, they're probably offered all of them. And um, it depends did on they read the book? Like People Magazine. What did People Magazine say? They said. Well, USA Today said, who is Elvis's granddaughter now rocking TV Jones? Okay, Daisy Jones. Yeah. Then uh, Amazon or um, People Magazine said, Amazon's new Daisy Daisy Jones in the sixth storefront is filled with groovy retro and style fashion finds. Okay, so they are talking all about how you can buy the stuff right there and then. That's crazy that you can do that. It's awesome. Oh, my what gosh. I wish day. I could wear some of her outfits. Right? Too, oh, I know. Those, oh, here. Like, you could Esquire did the wear differences. Wear a crop top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want And no bra? <laughs> no, the, di- the difference obviously, between, yeah. between the book and the, and the show? Well, because I don't want it to, like, spoil it for me going forward. Well, they won't tell you. They won't be allowed to tell you yet what goes forward, really. It doesn't say spoiler alert. I read that one, and it didn't. Ha- it didn't okay. Okay. So what did they point out? Let me see here. Fans of the novel have eager, eagerly awaited. Uh, they said that um, one of the showrunners spoke about bringing the story to life with Reed's help, with the writer's help. We don't bring the authors in to show them how the sausage is made, but they're always the first readers of our adaptions. I think that the bigger swings we take are thoughtful and the audience will go for it, but you're not going to be able to capture everybody's favorite thing. That's true. That's, that's fair. Mm-hmm. That's very fair. Um, Reed praised the production team's interpretation in an interview with Town & Country. She said it's a rare adaption that honors the book in a really lovely way and yet also adds to it. The show makes interesting changes that it makes that make it compelling to engage with this story a second time. That's actually that's fair. Okay. I think that's yeah. Fair. Yeah. That's not a bad review. All right. Well, this is a, a big old. Oh, here. Continue. The song. Okay. Here are the differences. The song lyrics are different. Pete Loving and Chuck Williams don't exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy and Camilla's meet cute is different. Oh, that's right. I heard about mm-hmm. that. Oh, because they're in a laundromat, laundromat here as yeah. opposed Instead to of, a bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she said that that was so that they would be on the same level, so she wouldn't know who he was. She, yeah, she yeah. could pretend like, like she it. didn't know. Who but then he was. she says, "Of course, of course I, I knew who he was." I, knew he was. Yeah. I love that. That was a great um, the way she delivered that line. Too. Love her. Yeah. She's great. Teddy sends Billy to rehab. Um, yeah, but that was pretty much that was the same. Yeah, let's see. But it says because he them. wouldn't. He, he drives him. There. He wouldn't yeah. go. Into Teddy, the, the band's manager, arrives yeah. at the hospital, sends Billy a message at Camilla's request, tell him he can start being a father the second. Or he this second, or he can, he's going to rehab. Mm-hmm. She says, but in the show, it's Teddy who sends Billy to rehab. Oh, uh, so yeah, she yeah. makes him take him in the other one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simone is gay, so that's not in the. Okay, so I was right. That is. Um, yeah, Simone is Daisy Jones' only friend, but in the novel, she factors in primarily as a side character. The show gives her a character, gives her character a more vibrant, self-contained story. In the novel, Simone's sexuality is unknown, but the television series depicts her as a gay black woman making her way in the 70s political climate. And I did read there's something interesting about that fact that Simone's character is supposed to be disco. 
Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. while and yet disc and disco is supposed to be like so open sexually, and yet she's having to mm. hide her mm-hmm. sexuality, and she works in disco. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like that was like mm-hmm. this. There's this weird like um, that would be a cool angle for them to take for a season two is to follow Simone's a spinoff. Rise. That's true. Her yeah, because her she becomes out. like a disco like legend. And her story yeah. and what she goes through, not just it? as a woman and a black woman, but a lesbian as mm-hmm. well. Like mm-hmm. when she was sitting in that man's lap and she was very oh that was, and oh was, that was know, like all of the layers of of you know yeah yeah it was um it's interesting it would I, but I was confused because I thought that she seemed already established. And so she's, because I don't remember her from the book at all, really. But if she's giving Daisy her start, I thought it was because she had the doors open to her. So why she is she a not backup a bigger... singer? But her, and then she she played the scene as well. Like mm-hmm. she was on the mm-hmm. strip playing all the clubs, and so so she didn't really rise up. She just had the connections. No, like how does she... It, she once she found her sound in disco, then she went on to New York. Remember, mm-hmm. um, with the guy she met at the party, and became this like disco like. Mm-hmm. At, legend at mm-hmm. studio 54 and was doing all these things mm-hmm. um so she, really like halfway through the book simone moves to new york mm. and you only hear their phone conversations and letters. oh yeah that's right yeah. that's right mm-hmm. i wonder if that was to get simone out of the way so daisy's really kind of like left with these people like kind of left in the thick of it with the band well i guess and we don't actually husband. see simone again until yeah. oh. the husband right yeah we don't know dun, dun, dun. Yeah. i remember a husband hold on all right, to be continued. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, you guys. You're I gonna, don't, you're you're don't remember anything. I don't <laughs> you know. Go back. Me. I think it's because I didn't read it. I, I think a, it's because you did the audio graphic memory. Like I need to see things. I actually them. did the audio book for Daisy Jones. The first one I think I've done in a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it was the first one I'd ever done, but I didn't know. Well, I felt like everyone I'd talked to about the book was like, "It's so good. You need to read it." But if you can listen to the audio book, it just brings it to life in a new yeah, way. It really does. And so I did. And I'm not an audio book person, mm-hmm. so there were times where I was like, "Oh, like I gotta." But Logan would get mad at me because I'd have my headphones and I'm like, <laughs> "I've just got to get through I this just, chapter. I want to hear this." <laughs> I actually did the audio book, but I skimmed the book as well. Um, and I really liked the way that they had each character in a different voice telling yes. their story in my mind. Because I'm usually the same. Oh, like, yeah. I can't. Yeah. If I just hear it, it's gone. But um, it helped me d- it does differentiate help and kind of who. split up the storyline. And, and they would say their name first and then. But, yeah, yeah, that's right. And that, But that's why I also think that the mockumentary, documentary style works because of the way that they did the audiobook. I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. I think the audiobook led to that for sure. All right, I'm going to ask you guys some questions we ask all of our guests. Are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Shoot. They're not hard. I Maybe. Promise. Okay. I don't, know. <laughs> don't get nervous. Um, is there a reboot that you liked better than the original? Hmm. I want to be like, fix my bra. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. I can't remember anything. I don't think I've ever liked. Like the Brady Bunch movie. A movie. Versus the show. Or, oh, a reboot. A reboot. Of a show. Yeah. Anything that's been rebooted that you prefer more than the original. Like 21 Jump Street. I would say probably 21 Jump. I mean, I didn't really Those watch the show to be fair, funny. but I love the yeah. movies. <laughs> the movies were funny, but yeah. I don't think I ever saw the show. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, I don't know. We watched a lot of Fuller House with okay. my kids. Oh, there you go. Oh, what about Jumanji? I love the Jumanji. Yeah. The new the Jumanji new movies. Yeah. I've actually yeah. watched that is the a new good one. one. Kevin Hart. Yep, yeah, actually, yeah. You're right. Those I've are watched good those ones. over and over with my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a cover of a song that you think is blasphemy? Oh, oh. <laughs> these are great questions. Um, I I don't know. I just it, it's hard to ever cover a sh- a song as well. Or is I don't there know. One you Actually, there are really some well? really good ones too. Um, I I have one that when I found out it was a cover, it blew my mind. Yeah, well, the Natalie and Brulia song, um, "Torn." Mm-hmm. That's a that cover? is a cover. No way. And I just found that out. Yeah. Wow. It was... Um, well, that's not blasphemy. That's no, It's not it. blasphemy. It just blew my mind. Yeah. Wow. That, Let me see. That was a cover. Um, isn't... I, I, I feel like one of... Sky is taught. I think one of Garth Brooks' biggest songs was a cover. Like, he wasn't the first one to do it. Um, oh, well, I didn't know. Friends Whitney in Low Houston's. Places. Whitney was Houston's cover is Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. I had no idea. Well, I had no idea. When, uh, I'm sorry. I know you're sorry. a huge I'm Dolly sorry. fan. You were born and raised in Nashville. <laughs> I was not. So all I knew was this 9 to 5 <laughs> actress was now a singer, Now somebody too. needs to bring that in. I'm sorry. To did you just say this 9 to 5 actress yes, was a singer? Was a singer. 
Talk about black <laughs> girl. Wow. I grew up in New York. It's Billy Joel and Bruce Springsteen. Oh, you're talking to I you. Know. Born and bred Nashville. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't know much. Hey, look, I adore her now. Dahlia, I moved here and I did my study. And then, when, yeah, and okay, then went good. to college in East Tennessee. Yeah, we both. Which is her, way, her home. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Her, birth, is, her I know. birthplace. Dolly I know. Queen. I get it now. Look, our mugs say Dolly for president. There we I go. know. Okay. All right. Actually, we all just agree. She's one on this She is. Yeah. Um, but I know I did not know song. that was her song. I did not know that was her. okay. Yeah, wait, I'm trying to find Natalie and Brulia. Who I'm pretty sure that's like some the Icelandic Garth something. Um, oh. I don't know. I just I just found that out a couple weeks like ago. Like Bjork, <laughs> not Bjork, <laughs> but oh, her. It was a Danish singer Danish. named Liss Liss Sorensen in 1994. Did she write it too? Because at Horn least is a song written her. by Scott Cutler oh. and Previn and Phil Thornalley. Okay. So, it was first recorded in 93 by this Danish uh, singer. Yeah. Okay. So not blasphemous, but blew my mind. Yeah. yeah that works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see. What else? Uh, what are you most proud of? Oh, God. Don't say your children. And don't you say your kids. Oh, man. <laughs> Dang. We're both going to be like, our Personally, kids, what are you We know you're great moms. What else? Oh, man. Um, I'll let you go first on this ah! one. <laughs> Hillary. Um, well... I, w- I was going to just say my family, like in general. That's I, fair. I come from a really, like a large family. I'm the oldest of five kids. Um, and my relationships with my family and uh, my roots here, which I know sounds like, you know. You have to work really hard to maintain relationships when you live in the same place for a long time. Um, when you have like m- many generations of like family ties and obligations and things like that. Well, and that makes a lot of sense because I mean, like, you know, people talk about school pride or you talk about pride in your in your sports, your local sports team, because you mm-hmm. grew up here. You know, I'm like New York Yankees, like, mm-hmm. you know, they're the best in the world. And, you know, everyone loves the Yankees except for people that don't live in New York, um, which is like everybody. But it like to feel like that about where you're from and your family and everything is like kind of grounded in the same yeah. sort of that. Well, get that. And then the people that you choose to bring as your family and then maintaining those relationships it's hard work it's yeah. hard to you know stay as a working rent. mom yeah and, yeah and to to stay close and to maintain that love for decades and decades like it's easy to let little differences come in and, and tear you apart and you know life tries to do that um but to uh try to stay unified has been um you know a goal in my life and something i'm proud of very good. Yeah. All right. Your turn, Brooke. Oy. <laughs> Follow that. No I pressure. I love my mom, too. <laughs> good job. And your mother-in-law. my family and my mother-in-law, my, everyone, my dad, my sister. Um, I, gosh, this is hard. I think I would be, I'm very proud of my female friendships. Um, I think as a working mom, um, you know, just an adult and living life, taking care of your kids, you don't value, your, well, you do value, but you just can't always have friendships and I feel like I have a lot of little friend groups and they mean so much to me and I think that's something that people you know I talk to my mom and dad about it like I I always try to travel and do things with my friends and they're like how do you like you know your mom never went on trips (laughs) that's always what we've we've learned learned that we never did that I'm like yeah yeah but we learned but you from our thank you 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 for letting us learn (laughs) from you your girlfriends I mean, a lot of our moms and or at least our grandmoms like were in the house making dinner mm-hmm. every night and like and weren't, you know, if and no one knew how to take care. I still have a lot of friends who if they go to leave, they have to like prepare every meal, have babysitters come, oh, leave a schedule not easy on the fridge. Leave, but, no, yeah. <laughs> but like I feel like it's gotten to a point where men help out around the house and are more yeah. involved with the kids. And, you know, I think that we have better fathers in our in our mm-hmm. lives and are able to uh, sort well, just of... just different roles. Yeah. I think fathers play a different role than they have historically mm-hmm. now. Well, I think that, yeah, I think they have the, to, yeah. the roles are sort of like open now for every, who, where, where is the help needed? Just mm-hmm. do it. Yes. <laughs> are the dishes need to be done? Did the laundry need to be folded? Like yeah, what needs not, to happen? And we're all very out. blessed with really great help. You have your like mm-hmm. father-in-law running off to pick up the kids all the time. I'm like, that's <laughs> impressive. I don't think my dad has ever like left the awesome. couch for me. Yeah, that's great. It, yeah. All so. of my people in my life are like, mm-hmm. we've really built a community. I, I, I yeah. hear that. I, I'm 
Definitely. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. But and you think, ladies, y'all are all a yes, community. I do think we just missed a golden opportunity to promote ourselves as realtors. Though. Oh, yes. My oh. career. Uh, <laughs> they, oh, yeah. We sell houses These here in Nashville. Both. <laughs> if you guys are looking to move to Nashville or sell in Nashville. We got two of the best. We've got I, two right I here. Sell list with us. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that was the wrong answer. I love it. <laughs> if you could time travel, where would you go? Where? Ooh, the when? 70s. When and where would you go? The 70s. golden age of rock and roll. Oh, you would? Yeah. Okay. I think it just, I, that's why I love it. I'm surprised it. you didn't say like 40s. I know. I don't know. Because like, you like World War II books, Yes, right? I do. You love World War I don't want to live but through you live World there. War II. I agree. I don't want to live I love that reading either. about it, but I don't want to live through yeah. that. <laughs> I don't want to go to a time when we did have to wear aprons and yeah, I want high heels at the same time. Roll. I know, right? I can get on board and with no some aprons. Maybe not the high heels all the time. I just hey. want the flapper error so I can just wear those outfits and dance and drink gin. Please, except like post prohibition. I don't care. Yeah. I don't want to go back when you can't drink. Yeah. Just kidding. Unless it's in a bathtub. <laughs> there you go. Gin <laughs> in a bathtub. Only, my only issue with the 20s and the fashion is there's no waste. And if yeah. I don't have a waste, I just look like a toilet paper roll. I like a very wide either, but toilet there's nothing paper roll. Be, but there's nothing Free binding. <laughs> yeah. But there's nothing binding in the belly. Like, I like that. It's like loose. It's like whatever. It says the tiny nugget of a human. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I need some cinching. Look, I got my spank. Actually, I don't have my spanks on. I wish I did. But no, I have this it, nice flowy the point 70s shirt. Yeah, with your flowy 70s. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait. Hold what on, guys. You? My, my phone's going to time out. Oh, yeah. 20s? What's your time? What's your time period? Honestly, I would go back like far, far. Um... Dinosaurs? I don't know what you said. No, Eight maybe not. Build a fire. Pre-antibiotic? Probably pre Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So, Amanda, you know when you're sick and you're, like, trying to find what these symptoms mean and you stumble down a big old TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts? Yeah. Um, let me just tell you, having just had the flu, there were many, many suggested remedies on uh, the old TikToks. Or, like, your group chat or whatever, right? Everybody, like, tries to tell you what you got, what's going wrong, what you should do. But you need to hear it from trusted professionals, not just random people on the Internet. Yeah, that's why I'm very grateful for ZocDoc. They help you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care that you need and deliver the type of experience that you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed. They take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who's patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. Go to ZocDoc.com slash WWB and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash W-W-B. ZocDoc dot com slash W-W-B. Thanks, ZocDoc, for sponsoring What Women Binge. Hey, guys, what's <laughs> the it. best part of your job being realtors? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I love being in houses. I love. Oh gosh, that's, yeah. that's really? the fun yeah, part. Just walking just like through houses, yeah. seeing houses. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. But I mean, the people are fun. Honestly, I think the clients. <laughs> are they? We love the clients. That sounds a little. <laughs> no, I really no, think no. like, I mean, okay, so when, this is going to sound super cheesy, but like, um, you know, when you have your clients text you a picture and they're like, we just did whatever. Thank you so much. And, you know, they're so happy in their house or you just it's such an intense process because yeah. you talk every day, multiple big times decisions. a day. You're talking through these purchase. big things. Yes. Yeah. And it's like one of the most stressful things you can do. So you get bonded to these people in a really intense way very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um and there's not, there aren't a whole lot of experiences. I think probably similar to when you're on a movie set or a TV yeah. show and you say, you know, those people become like your family. Yeah. You spend so much time. It's it's a really, you you're know. In there, you're in the weeds with them. Yeah. I know. And, I've always become very close to my realtors. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and we're like, both very personality-wise. We're caretakers. We're lovers. We're, you know, we just love people. And so I think you... You do. You form a bond with these yeah. people and you care for them and you want them to be happy. And yeah. it's not just it's not a sale. Like when people say it's sales, it's like I can't make you buy a house. Yeah. Yeah. I can only help you find what you want, you know. Aww. Yeah. I like that. Like yeah. guiding someone towards a yep. big decision in their life. Um, if you weren't doing what you're doing, what what else would you be doing besides podcasting? I know. Podcasting would be great. Uh, could I, I want to be a professional reader. I just want to read books all day. You but, do. Yeah. That you, is a job. Wow. You read. I know. I just, uh, really. I actually just paid someone $200 today to read my script and give me, and tell me what they hate about it. So 
You Hello? can get that job. <laughs> I mean, I'll hire you. Yeah, but you could also go get that job. Hire these I know. People. I know. Yeah. I've. Uh, I got that was coverage. The, that was not a career I knew about in college. Or, uh, yeah. You know, that's a good old um, age one. Like when your like knees don't work anymore and you can't walk up and down the stairs of the houses. You just like yeah. you know I'm gonna take to the like, couch with a book. But like anything, I'm sure you would hate it if it was your job, yeah, or, maybe so. or not love it as much. Well, you'd be like, I have. I always used to say three. that oh. naming OPI nail polishes look that seems like a fun job. Fun. I think that'd be hard. Wow. Wouldn't that's that be such fun? a good idea? Yeah, that's wild. I just I want to know how they come up with Does the someone name. Just I actually the names? know the answer to this. Okay, you do I've Ooh, asked? Of course you before. do. <laughs> so what they do is every collection they gather the whole team around that's mm-hmm. worked on it. They put them all on the table and they go around and like as a team name them. Mm. Okay. So it's like a it's not one person's deciding on the names. It's like a so they have like a big whiteboard on the wall and they I just assume like start so. writing yeah. things like out. Like, okay, tank. rose. It looks like a rose. So rose colored. So rose, yeah. but uh, what's a what have we done that one before? Yeah. No, you know. Yeah. So I I think it's just like Wilting a, a rose. day of mm-hmm. like let's name them. Well, they they have themes. Yeah, they put out they like themes. you know. Oh yeah, like, like grease twelve. Or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That probably makes it easier because you have to go work yeah, within a like framework. That, so there is. What about you, Hill? You what's that? your uh, what's your uh, your alternate universe job? Well, I'm I'm actually on the wait list, and it's kind of a couple years long to apprentice to become a falconer. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right, I forgot. Oh my gosh, I saw I the birds yesterday. Woman. Rather like you would have loved. Don't, you don't get paid to do that, <laughs> but. <laughs> I would, I would very much. That's, you. that's gonna, what I was. Well, you're going to be an old lady birds. with your birds, and this one's going to be an old lady with her I books. I used to fly yeah. uh, all kinds of birds. Uh, that is the cool. Our Zoom. golden girl's house is going to be <laughs> interesting. <laughs> you're going to have like a million otters in the bathtub, which is going to oh, make me crazy. Nope, nope. You I your don't want You're going to have falcons. I mean, you're going to be on the couch reading. You'll yeah, be like I'll be, Dorothy at the group. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to be doing? Smoking. I'm going to be smoking. No, no not with all my You're birds. You're not. Yeah. No, like 80% I will long. have the patio. Hello, I'll have the bedroom <laughs> with the patio so I can go outside and smoke. Because all I want to do when I'm old is smoke. No. But, um, that's, no. I, I won't do it no, when I'm young. Like when my skin is wrinkled, I will take to it. Oh, I, well, I don't letter. believe you that you will ever. I don't believe that you will ever settle in one place and just not do anything. That's you yeah. will be planning a million things for, for us sure. to do all the time. Well, we will be traveling because I mean, we will have to go to different places every season. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm for like, sure. Oh, okay, no, we're going to go really see some mansions. We're going to go tour some things. We're going to go to some concerts. We're going to be going. I'm just going to be keeping the Florida house and the, the West Coast house, whichever we want to land at for warmth. Yeah. Happy while y'all go Italy, to the cold. Italy. will be holding down York. the fort. <laughs> Tahoe. Hey, we got you to New York in the winter. It might be I, a band. I can go to places where it is cold for, for small time. <laughs> yeah. Do I want to go and sit? I'll be your winter friend. She'll be your summer friend. (laughs) (laughs) I do not want to go sit in 300 inches of snow. I do. We're We're going to spend these seasons with Melissa. We're going to spend these seasons with Amanda. Tahoe has 338 inches of snow as of right now. Yeah. And I think they're getting pretty. It's so fun. I love it. Because you know what it means? You can't freaking leave. Yeah. You are stuck inside. You are doing a puzzle. You have a cup of tea. Amanda, Nobody's you would going anywhere. Like that. There's nothing to do. You would love no. the home. No, she I would not. Now she wants the option me. to leave. I know. That's I need the, the option to she leave. She is a homebody, well, but she has to have the option. If she's stuck. Well, if she I was can. trapped. No, I have to leave the house once a day, but that could be a walk. No. That's what I learned during COVID. It can be a trip to the grocery store. Nope. I have to leave the house once a day. I'll go, just go but to you lunch. Can still, like, get out and go eat and go to. So yeah. you're like. I can. I need to do that sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I need to get out of the house like once a day. Yeah. But do it. the rest of the time, I'm I'm like I'm I'm okay with in the mountains only. Yes. But in the mountains, I don't the beach. I don't want to. I don't like the beach. You don't like the wait. You don't like the beach. No, I'm that person that's like the mountains are calling and I must go. Like yeah. that's me. Send me off that's to you mountains. and Matt. Yeah, I don't know what that life's like, like. I want the beach. Too. I like the mountains. I don't want too. the sand. It gets in my bikini. I don't like. I don't wear bikinis. Well, you know, so you're much. only three hours from the Smokies. I I know. I know. Which are and I'm dying to go there. Gorgeous. Have you been? I haven't. Oh my, okay. Girl I would trip. take you next week. But okay. you're, yeah. We'll go this right, weekend. Let's go. Yeah. It's three hours. <gasps> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> I'll be at 90s con, but okay. Melissa's <laughs> always got her go britches well, on. Check me out at 90s con. <laughs> yeah, I'm always, yeah. I'm ready to go anywhere. I Where just, is Unfortunately, I have children con? that I have to, this 90s con is in Hartford. Okay. There'll be well, another well, one later this year. So, you so know, all your Connecticut yeah, friends you'll, will be You're very familiar with the area. Yeah, my Connecticut friends are coming up to visit. Yeah, I have to divide time between work, play, family, Yeah, she was like, you can't come to 90s con. I was like, okay. I have too many people. She's like, I have too many people. And I was like, okay. Fair. That's my, fair. I, gotta start, I have to tell a bunch of people they can't come because uh, like I, I can't keep giving away like fifty free tickets to Comic Con. They're doing yeah. another '90s con though in Tampa. I know in Florida. I might yeah. go with you to that. I will one. be there. All oh, there. You can come okay, to that. Well, Calling your name. Yeah, Florida. 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 It's also Tucker's birthday, so we'll go to we'll hit Disney on the way. Perfect. 
Um, well, stay Disney, at the Airbnb. The Disney, lady. Disney and 90s Con in Tampa, people. I'll see you there. Um, wait, wait. do we have more questions? What else do we have? Let's do this or that because we're running Let's out of time. Let's do this or that. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Hillary. Yes. Original or reboot? Original. Brooke. Original. Musical theater or concert? Concert. Concert. Always. Mm-hmm. Action or adventure? Adventure. Adventure, yeah. Super Bowl or World Series? Super Bowl. Ooh, yeah, Super Bowl. <laughs> you seemed torn for a second, Brooke. <laughs> Joe Joe would be up. He has gone to several World Series. He's all about the World Series. But yeah, yes. And I really we're there for the more. concert yeah. in the middle of the Super Bowl. But uh, Super, uh, I mean, Super, Super Bowl, Bowl is like, if someone gave me the option. Yeah, I'm I don't take care who's Super playing. Bowl. I'll go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Carbs or sugar? Ooh, they can't. You can't have both. <laughs> on both. Um, I want some sugar on my if you carbs. Have like a like but carbs. Cover pretzel. Carbs. Yeah, carbs. Aisle or Car- window? Aisle. Window. Me too. I'm a window girl. I'm window. But I'm trauma. Wait, well, we I'll talked about that. We, have, we have a good strategy for getting people not to sit by us. On the plane. <laughs> this one time, Hillary and I <laughs> flew back, and I taught her my trick. <laughs> we were on a Southwest flight, and we didn't want anybody to sit in the middle, middle seat. Middle. Mm-hmm. And it was a full flight, and we knew it. And I was like, Hillary. We had gotten on pretty early, too. So we yes. are just watching we people get on and looking looking at the seat between us. So I was like, act really ill. She's like, you're going to bomb. Come and on. She's like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Oh, God. <clears throat> and and so Amanda I get starts to, fanning I'm me fanning off. fanning her. Did you have to do this like the whole time they were boarding? Oh, it oh was, yeah. It was, well, it comes in waves, you know. <laughs> like a 20 like minute process. She'd be okay oh, for a little okay. bit. While well, someone's putting a suitcase up take a break. I'm not going to lie. We we had been we had had a good time, so it wasn't that far fetched. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it didn't have to act that hard. You need hard. a little bit of a hangover to pull this off. <laughs> and it I'm, was so funny. And she's and like, "Ooh, it's okay. It's work. okay. You're, are you going to be okay? Do you do you need me to get the barf bag?" And I'm like, "Just in case, just in case." So you know, I got I'm, the barf bag in hand. <laughs> We're causing we a major play, scene. I, I said I've never been an actress. I was totally an actress. Yeah. This day. When you're trying to save seat, I wish I could watch that. It I'm going to need to see that. I know. Let's <laughs> videotape that crap, will you? <laughs> It was brilliant. <laughs> well, I thought I was smart just by like when I had a baby under two years old, I would just get on first and then put the baby in that seat. And unless it was an absolutely full flight, that seat was mine. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. now had two seats for the price of one. Yeah, because nobody wants to sit next to the baby. Nobody no. wants to sit next to the baby. And they assume the seat's taken. So they just yeah. keep walking past. Now what I do is two of us will pay for the like uh, the, the bump up to mm-hmm. get to be one of the first mm-hmm. 15 yeah. on. And then we'll hold two rows. I just put all the tray tables down. I just put all the bags and coats on the seats and stuff. Do people and not get mad at you for that? Nobody has really ever, ever said, is anyone in those seats? One time. Because yeah, I just keep happen. looking towards the bathroom. Yeah. Like, where is he? Where is yeah, he? I always look towards the front. And mm-hmm. if somebody's eyeing, I'm like, yeah. Oh, right yeah. here, right here. Yeah, yeah. right here. Yeah. 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 Or look towards the back like, where, where Well, now we have the perfect thing. Because people assume, like, if you're fanning someone and they're kind of green yeah. around the gills, they're like, oh, no. Yeah. And they just kept on moving until the very end because we were the very last, last. So someone middle did sit. And I think, last. I think oh. the flight attendant even came up and said, is someone sitting here? Yes. Was, did, like, <laughs> and we said, no. Like, we have to put someone yeah. in the seat. Oh, and, my God. And we didn't want to lie to the flight attendant. Yeah. I mean, oh, but they God. know. That's cute. Yeah, that's cute. they see it all. Well, thank you guys for being here. Oh yeah! All right, come back when we fin when the season finale is episode done, mm-hmm. and let's do a little rehash of the whole thing. Keep good yeah. notes. Yeah. All right. And thanks for being here, ladies. Absolutely. Should it's we so should we go shopping and buy outfits and all wear our, uh, <laughs> our everybody purchase our, some, <laughs> some Daisy Dinner. Everyone wear a bad wig. <gasps> oh yeah. Bring your your bin of wigs then. <laughs> all right. I'll bring all my bin bad of wigs, wigs and mustaches for everyone. I will. Thank you guys for uh, being here. And don't forget, we have merch. We have merch, guys. Oh yeah. We have merch. So go check out our merch. Rate and review us. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or um, you know wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks for being here, guys. Daisy Jones and the Six. Check it out. Melissa Jones and the Four, Three. <laughs> Three. Three. I can well, count. but you can add up like five. They do. They, yeah, they add yeah. up. Yeah. So <laughs> Melissa Joan and the seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>